Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News. I'm Geoffrey Thomas. Today, responding to your requests, I'm joined again by UK aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey to look in depth at the various hotspots in the search for uh, MH370 and show you the locations and bring you up to date with the very latest news. So, First, let's get an update from Richard on the progress of Ocean Infinity's Amada 7806, which is en route to offshore Australia. Richard. The um, Amada 7806 is now well underway, uh, about 500 nautical miles uh, uh, away from the Mauritius uh, testing area where they were testing a AUVs. It still has uh, uh, a long way to go, um, and there is a rather nasty storm uh, forcing them to take a more southerly route uh, to the uh, MH370 search area. Um, but uh, they they will be uh, on schedule in the search area in seven days from now. And we're showing you, viewers, um, a uh, the, the actual track of a Marta seven eight zero six from from um, sh uh, ship finder, our vessel finder, I should say. And uh, Richard's also you've drawn in a track, haven't you? A, a, a possible uh, track for the next few days to the search area. Yes, the Amada seven eight zero six is uh, currently. Um, on a course of 137.8 degrees, uh, a direct uh, track would be uh, uh, about 17 degrees less. Uh, but because of this storm, it's uh, heading further south. It's also slowed down um, from its maximum economic speed of 10 knots. It's doing 8.6 knots at the moment. The reason for that is the wave height in in the area where they uh, currently are is uh, 2.3 meters uh, so that's uh, quite quite heavy seas and uh, uh, nevertheless they uh, uh, are making good progress indeed so richard we've had many requests for a clearer picture of where the hot spots are for mh370 search um, now, you've again uh, kindly produced a, a graphic which we're going to show viewers um, in, in a few seconds on the screen. Uh, perhaps you can walk us through those. Yeah, there were um, in 2024, March, there was a remembrance event um, held by the next of kin in Malaysia, uh, in Kuala Lumpur. And at that event, um, there were several slides uh, from Ocean Infinity that were were shown, and it uh, included a summary of the the research being done by various experts. It lists uh, a number of universities who have been uh, providing expertise to Ocean Infinity and a number of groups and, and individuals uh, such as the independent group, uh, such as myself, such as uh, Captain Blely and, and Jean-Luc uh, Marchand. Uh, these uh, experts uh, have all provided information to Ocean Infinity and they have assessed uh, uh, all the various inputs they've received and uh, that is what is uh, driven them to their conclusion and which parts of the search area they should look. So viewers, that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. At the uh, bottom of the seventh arc is Captain Belly's. The next one further up is the IG one. And the one furthest to the north is Richard Godfrey's Whisper uh, technology site. Uh, and that uh, technology, I should mention, has been um, endorsed and verified and whatnot by Professor Simon Maskell from the Liverpool University. And we should also mention here, too, that um, uh, 
Professor Simon Maskell was at the initial meeting with Minister Loke uh, in Malaysia uh, last year. Yes, the meeting in May uh, 2024 was uh, for Ocean Infinity to present their proposal to uh, the Minister of Transport, uh, Anthony Loke, in Malaysia and his uh, team. And in the the picture um, we're showing, you will see uh, Pete Foley, the former ATSB uh, project director for MH370. Uh, next to him, going left to right, is uh, Josh Broussard, who's the chief technology officer of uh, Ocean Infinity. Then, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Professor Simon Maskell, uh, and next to him uh, is Maxime Even, the uh, commercial director uh, back then for Ocean Infinity. Um, and then uh, two members, uh, representatives of, of the next of kin. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, we've, we've identified the three hotspots. Um, there is another hotspot. Uh, where, well, there's, there's quite a few uh, quite a number of different spots that have been claimed by various people, but one in particular, which uh, we've been drawing our attention to again, was that of Captain Simon uh, Simon Hardy, which was well to the south of uh, Captain Belly's site. Uh, any thoughts as to why that is not included uh, by Ocean Infinity? I think that was um, back in 2018 and driven by the original um, Boeing estimates of how far uh, a Boeing 777 uh, could fly uh, on the fuel that was available, uh, they estimated the maximum range was down to about 39.5 degrees south. Um, I think uh, Captain Simon Hardy, uh, Captain Byron Bailey, uh, Captain Mike Keane um, all did their own analyses and came to uh, an area of 39.5 or 40 degrees south. Um, I think since then, uh, there's been new studies done by Boeing and by other experts on the uh, fuel consumption, uh, on the winds that were prevailing at the time uh, in in the uh, search area and on the flight path that uh, MH370 is assumed to have taken. Um, so we're now um, less convinced that the uh, aircraft went so far south the uh, Australian authorities, uh, um, ATSB and uh, the Department of Science Technology Group, the DSTG, uh, did an, a, uh, a Bayesian methods analysis and uh, came to the conclusion that uh, it's more likely that uh, MH370 didn't go uh, much further than about 35 degrees south. Um, the whisper tracking shows that uh, there wasn't a straight path uh, into the uh, Indian Ocean. And uh, in fact, uh, the aircraft uh, most likely didn't even get uh, uh, down to as far as 35 degrees south and is more likely at around 30 degrees south. So there are a number of experts, a number of uh, ideas and theories uh, but uh, Ocean Infinity have now come to a conclusion um, for the present search uh, to look uh, at these three that we've uh, indicated. But of course, we also must mention, I mean, all of these folks, Captain Simon Hardy, Captain Byron Bailey, uh, all very, very well-meaning. Uh, it's wonderful to have so many people bringing their ideas to bear uh, on the search for MH370 and keeping the whole thing alive and in front of the Malaysians. But uh, moving on, um, unfortunately, Richard, we're still getting a deal of misinformation out there about the search and that is confusing matters. And, and some of that, in fact, touches on our coverage. Uh, I, I wonder if you can remind viewers um, of the sources of information that we have that are really exclusive 
Yes, well, number one, uh, Ocean Infinity. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, they certainly uh, know what they're planning and uh, where they're going. Um, uh, number two, uh, Professor Simon Maskell, who was actually at the, the meeting. Uh, number three, um, the AAIB in Malaysia, who uh, uh, have uh, sent a lengthy email that we published uh, commenting on, on the questions about the upcoming search. Um, number four, the next of kin are well informed and one mm -hmm. of them has published recently his views uh, on my uh, website. So we have a, a, a large range of uh, um, credible uh, sources to uh, the information we're uh, broadcasting. And we also must mention, of course, our dear friend uh, Bladen Gibson, um, the uh, debris hunter who has uh, also been uh, very helpful in uh, shaping our coverage um, with his analysis of the debris and in fine detail. Uh, that particular video was incredibly popular, uh, identifying what he thought were the 20 major pieces of debris. Um, we're going to... Uh... I have, um, if I can just mention, sure. I have great res respect for, for Blaine and the work he's done um, over the years uh, at his own expense, traveling around the Indian Ocean, meeting lots of local people and motivating them to uh, get out there on, on the beaches in various countries and, and look for for debris uh, items. He's personally handed in a number of items to the authorities uh, they haven't all been analyzed uh, yet but uh, they all add up to a, a very significant picture and he's worked together with uh, professor chariti uh, uh, chariti uh, patirachi uh, the university of western australia who has done a, a drift analysis uh, uh, to see where those items could have originated and his work uh, also identifies a similar area to the whisper uh, work that we've been doing look indeed and of course he went to professor padarachi first to say you know where would the debris end up and and uh, he directed blaine where to go and he found it so uh, yeah again all based on science um no speculation um and uh and so you know we're doing our very best uh, to bring just credible information to the table and monitoring the situation 24-7. Make uh, one correction of what I said yesterday uh, mm. in the uh, importance of getting uh, correct information out there. I mentioned yesterday the um, submarine uh, Minerve, the French submarine that was found by uh, Ocean Infinity in the Mediterranean, was in relatively shallow waters, uh, less than a thousand meters deep. That was uh, a mistake on my part. The uh, Ocean Infinity found the Minerve at 2,377 meters uh, in, in the Mediterranean. And I was confusing that find with another one that was at less than a thousand meters. Uh, so I apologize for that. Not a problem. Um, yes, and that's one thing we're going to introduce is uh, uh, corrections if, if we need to. Hopefully we, we won't have to do very many of those. Um, but yes, and we're getting tremendous feedback from viewers as well who are asking questions and uh, raising issues. And uh, we're trying to address those. And this is what we've done with today's episode is to show clearly where the search areas are. So Richard, thank you very much again for your time. Thank you all for watching um, Daily Airline News, the special edition, another one on MH370. Please subscribe to us. Please like us and do please keep those comments coming. And uh, they're really uh, terrific and much appreciated. Thank you.